Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm talking today with Andy Utley, who is the Director of Sales for Jack Travel. Now, what's Jack Travel? Well, it, where you can see where Andy is right now may be a bit of a clue, and we're going to find out all about Jack Travel and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, first of all, Andy, how are you, and where, where are you? I, I, I well, know, but... <laughs> well, I'm... Absolutely doing great. This is a glorious uh, summer's day. I'm on top of Carlton Hill uh, in Edinburgh in Scotland. And hopefully behind you, behind me you can see Edinburgh Castle and the Balmoral. Uh, so right in the heart of Edinburgh and we are enjoying a great day. Everyone's happy. The sun is out. Um, so all good. Well, we all look forward to joining you soon there in, in the UK. I think things are in Scotland specifically. Uh, things are good, looking much better these days, and we're all hoping this summer we'll be able to get over there. But let's start by asking exactly the question I asked is, what is Jack Travel and what does it offer? Uh, and also, where does the name come from? Okay, well, the name uh, actually stands for Jack Anthony Corona, so J-A-C. Uh, he started the, the business 40-odd years ago, 1975. Um, as a, a DMC, so uh, specializing in, in, in FIT and groups. And we would do basically everything that a client would need on the ground. Okay. Uh, we don't do flights, but we do everything else from hotels to restaurants to guides to entrances, all your transport needs. And we only work with the trade. So we're a wholesaler. So we're only working with travel agents and, and tour operators. Uh, and we leave our clients to deal with uh, directly, selling directly to the public. Um, and that's us. And we've got an office up here in, in Scotland where I'm based uh, in Edinburgh. And we've got an office over in Ireland in Dublin and an office down in, in London. So, so you, basically, those, uh, you basically do travel in, in England, Scotland, Ireland, I assume Wales too or not? And Wales, of okay. course. Can't you, forget okay. our Welsh cousins, absolutely. Okay. Now, uh, just a quick aside. Uh, you were acquired back in uh, 2017 by WebBeds, right? It's a B B two B accommodation provider. How how has that yes. helped Jack? How has that helped Jack Travel? Well, to be brutally honest, in the, in the world of COVID and pandemics, it's it's financially helped us. We've been really well supported, and you know we've got through this this horrible time uh, in a in a good way. Uh, so that's been that's been great. We are fairly autonomous. We are very autonomous. We Jack travel um, in in the UK. We're sort of carrying on as we as we always have, doing groups and and our uh, FIT bookings. But also, Webbeds they are such a huge player um, that we get to to benefit from extra hotel inventory and obviously great buying power. Right. So it's been more to do that. We're doing more and more groups and bookings in, in Europe. Uh, and, you know, we can piggyback, so to speak. Uh, if, for instance, we can get a, a rate in the Loire Valley or wherever, we could go in and, and use, use those rates. Got so it. I would describe maybe the best of both worlds right now. Um, and uh, no, it's, all, it's all good. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, your staff. Uh, I think before the pandemic, you had about 60. Uh, and are you gradually, I, I assume you probably took a bit of a hit there over the past year, but are you gradually now restoring staff? And, uh, and, and really well, actually, actually pre-pandemic, James, we were, we're over 100. Oh, okay. And, and now we're about 60. So um, maybe the only good thing about the pandemic was when it came about, it was... Uh, as we all know, uh, we went into sort of lockdown towards the end of March. I always remember I was meant to be in Boston on Paddy's Day, and I thought that would be a great laugh, but uh, that never happened. We went into the lockdown instead, and mm. but right. normally that time we would take on seasonal staff, you know, sort of uh, April uh, for the you know for the season ahead, uh, you know. So we didn't recruit for that. So that we were budgeted for I think about 105, 110 staff. Uh, so we didn't, um, you didn't take on the seasonal staff. We didn't replace the empty desks, you know, just some natural churn for want of a better phrase. Okay. Uh, but on top of that, sadly, we had to, to let go um, about 20, 20 staff. Um, but 
the, the Reds, we haven't had to make any further cuts. We've absolutely got the core staff uh, to enable us to do everything that we did pre-pandemic. And you know, we've got all our contracts in place for, for this year and next year. And we've got operational staff, uh, all very experienced in working in the North American market. Uh, so thankfully, we're in a, in a very good place, uh, all things considered. Now, are you back in business now? Are you starting to run towards uh, even for the local market, well, basically the UK market? Yes. In a way, James, I, working in sales, I've never been out of business because we're always looking ahead and contracting for, for the years uh, ahead. So in that side of things, uh, you know, we, we, all our well, majority of our clients uh, you know, are contracting for, for next year, and that's all very positive and coming up with great product ideas for you know, what will be a different world post-COVID, sure. uh, you know, different sort of demand. But what we're starting to see is, is um, we're hoping for August to, to start seeing some, some people actually traveling back. Domestically, we are seeing, um, you know, bookings coming through. But, uh, you know, for our European and North American clients, I, I think, to be honest, it'll be August, September before we see them right. in any, any numbers. But our clients are obviously desperate to travel, um, and you know we're, we're just having to, to go with obviously what the government guidelines are, and um, you know go with the flow. You can't. You, you just have to. Yeah. To no. go with what the, the cards that are dealt. It's out of our hands. Um, but you know, certainly August September is what we're hoping for, and obviously this time next year, oh, you know, the world will be vaccinated, and that we very much back to back to business as usual. No, and we're all or all hoping for that as well. Believe me, uh, we're 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 chomping at the bit here to get over back to Europe and get over back to. Uh, uh, well, you're all very uh, welcome. Now let's talk a little bit. Now you are really focused on uh, uh, group travel, FIT, or a bit of both. What's your specialty? Well, both. To be honest, um, we've we've absolutely done. Uh, I mean, groups. As I say, we've been doing this since 1975. So a good few years and you know the group business where we're working with western europe uh and north and south american clients so a lot of them are sending group business uh and that can be a very simple city break maybe not so much for the north american market but certainly europeans coming over for a london city break and then and then heading back uh, or a full touring program you know that classic uh one week tour be it of scotland england or ireland um, but also we're doing FIT, and we're really differentiating ourselves from the internet. I mean, from what right. you can book, the bed banks of the world where you can you know, book on Expedia or what have you. We're, we're trying to sort of show uh, the, the added extra value, something that we call tailor-made. So we will, as the name would suggest, tailor-make um, your client's requirements. So if they wanted to come to Edinburgh and not just stay in the hotel, but also get out and maybe do something, um, especially absolutely for what they want, something that's not off the shelf. That's that's what we we're what we're providing. Um, we're very lucky in the fact that we've got a lot of B and Bs contracted, so really you can um, go all over the UK and Ireland using using bed and breakfast, which are you know small guest houses where you're you're maybe staying in someone's home, which has got four or five rooms. Uh, so that, that's a great price point. It's a lot cheaper than hotels, but also means you can really get out and explore the country and you're not uh, having to, to stay where the hotels are, maybe the, sort of the, t the towns and cities. So we have that. Um, and we've got loads of different suppliers as well. Um, so we can do things that are slightly, you know, different from what someone would, would normally book online. Uh, and we can get exclusive uh, ex exclusivity as well to some uh, events that you may want to, to take part in or, sure. um, uh, you know, just uh, maybe entrances, you know, want to do a visit to a castle, whatever it is, we can uh, tailor make all of that for you. No, no, and absolutely. Uh, things like I'm sure you, you deal with the, tat the, the annual tattoo in Edinburgh, things like that, the, the kind of big celebrations they have in Scotland, certainly. Now, yes. We're... Now, let, oh, just, now, sorry, go for it, James. Yeah, yeah, sorry, go, go the, the, uh, uh, so you, you've already sort of detailed sort of what makes you a little bit different from, so what makes you really, what, from there are other, obviously other inbound operators in the market. What, what do you believe kind of sets you apart, uh, your, your unique selling proposition? 
I would generally say it's the people. Um, we've got, we do enjoy a lot of buying power, uh, for want of a better phrase, uh, in terms of, you know, the business that we do, not now, but the business we did pre-COVID, certainly, uh, and being tied in web beds, we can guarantee good rates, good availability. But really, why I would say people, why I like working with Jack Travel, why I'm proud to work for Jack Travel is the people. And we've got really, really experienced and passionate people who love Scotland, Ireland, uh, and England, the whole UK. And that comes through in the service that they deliver. So it's not just the fact they're very experienced and they know the ins and outs of, of, of the countries, where to visit, what not to visit, when not to visit, but they will really generally want to make sure that your clients um, have a good time. And so maybe it's that sort of extra little um, extra little sales or extra little service that you'll experience. But I would say especially post-COVID, that is really coming through or maybe not quite post-COVID yet, but as we're coming to the end of it, we're coming out of the tunnel. You know, I'm talking to my team and they really are passionate about, you know, making sure that we can get people to visit the country again and they will have a great experience. And that's not from just from Jack Travel. I've got to say that's coming from the whole industry as well. Um, right. we, we can't wait to, to have the doors open again and welcome you because we know it's not easy. Um, and, uh, you know, so we will support you if uh, any of your, your clients are wanting to book with us and, and feel that there is that extra little mile needed to go in terms of convincing people to travel, that it's safe, that, you know, what they're going to do, whatever it is, let us know because I think more than ever we need to work together and, you know, get, get back to where we were in 2019 and before. And the only way we're going to do that is by working together. And we certainly look forward to, to doing our bit to help that. Now, now the, in terms of, you said, mentioned that you do work directly with travel advisors and travel agencies here in the States. Do you also work with uh, specific tour operators uh, that might be based here uh, for, to, serve, to uh, provide we, their needs? We don't with any of the, the really big ones. Uh, we, in terms of the ones that work with travel agents. So, on the group side, we do a lot of educational travel. Right. So we work with alumni and directly with colleges and universities. Um, and we work with uh, Road Scholar. So that's one of our, our bigger accounts. So, but in terms of agents or, you know, the, uh, I think the CIEs of the world, the Trafalgos, we don't work with them. Um, and... But that's so we're looking to work directly with travel agents, offering commission or at a net rate, um, and that's that sort of. Our, our well, that's that's philosophy. actually that's actually one of my questions. Uh, the next question is, you know, what kind of compensation do you offer uh, travel advisors, travel agencies? I know uh, you, you. I mentioned you mentioned net rates and commission. I understand you were kind of all set to unveil a, a program last year, uh, but then, then of course the pandemic hit. Yeah, so good old pandemic. Yes, um, we uh, yeah. As I say, we're sort of our history has been working on on net rates, um, but through again through webbeds and and the online side of things, um, you know the, the wider business is very much used to work on commission levels. So again, we are we're looking at starting off at about twelve percent commission level. Mm -hmm. um, but again, if some agency wants to contact direct and change that on the back of, you know, a certain piece of business, you know, we're, we're obviously open to that. Again, it goes back to this working in partnership, trying to, you know, build together. That's what we're about as a business. Um, and yeah, so, but we're initially going with 12%. We think that's, that's about right. Okay. Um, and that's our, that's our plan for now. Now, um, what's the latest right now in terms of when, you hope, expect uh, Britain, Scotland, Ireland to be open to the American market. Uh, what are you hearing at this point about uh, reopening dates or months? Uh, and, and also what, it, what will be required for Americans to visit uh, Scotland, uh, England, and Ireland? Well, it's still fairly open. Um, so we are... We obviously go with the government guidance right now, and as it stands right now, you know the North America or 
the USA is not on the, gr the green list, uh, right. as it yeah, refers to. So, am amber, you know, we would say caution yellow. I love amber. Amber doesn't sound yeah. that threatening, actually. But it, it, it <laughs> Well, yeah, it's one of these, do we stop or do we go when it's an amber light? But anyway, it's it, the hope and the reasoning behind this. Obviously, the UK and the USA are doing extremely well with the vaccination program. So the hope is certainly talking to our bigger clients like Rose Scholar that we spoke about. Or we're hoping that uh, come August, you know, once you would get on the green list, right? Um, that would be around August, September time, and what that would mean. So right now, if you were like Portugal is on the green list, um, if I was to go to Portugal or Portuguese was to to come here, you'd have to have a test prior to like within seventy two hours prior right. to departure. That obviously would have to be negative um and so you travel with that so you get into the country with obviously your um your passport and your negative uh, results and then you have to take a test prior to departure right um on the way back yeah and i presume you'd have to have another test as well i think it's a week after you'd have to check for for north americans but i think that's that's the way of it now whether that changes, of course, given the results of the, the vaccine rollout, we'll, we'll have to, to wait and see. Uh, but certainly, you know, what we were talking about before this call as well, you know, North America is, is really seeming to get, well, sorry, I keep calling it North America, USA specifically, seems to be getting really back to normal. And so is the, so is the UK. So it's, uh, it's all very positive. No, it, it, so the big announcements, yeah. sorry. Yeah, it does sound uh, very promising. As you know, our neighbors to the north are having a bit slower of a time of it. Uh, in fact, I, I think I might get to Britain before I get to uh, Canada, the way things are going up there. Uh, and, and it's weird because we feel very badly for them up there. Now, in terms of, you said you're already selling for, for later this year, next year. What, what are kind of the destinations that are really uh, uh, most popular from what your perspective is? Uh, from at least from travel from America to uh, Scotland, Eng England, Ireland? Well, it's the, I mean, you'll never get away from the, the big, the big attractions such as our, our lovely castle, if you can right. see it over by my shoulder. So there'll always be a, a demand for that, um, you know, or, or down in London, be it Buckingham Palace and, you know, the normal kind of almost box ticking exercise. And the great thing about the UK and Ireland is it's so small, it's dead easy to get around. You know, right. you could, uh, there'll be states in, in North America, in, uh, you know, all of North America, I'm sure, that you could just fit the whole of the UK and Ireland into. And we're not, not that big. So it enables us to, to offer a lot of other things. So maybe not staying in the city centre. Uh, people are sort of thinking, you know what, I will base myself outside the city. So we're sort of seeing that, a bigger demand for non-city centre, you know, because the hotels have got a bit of grounds to them and yeah. uh, a bit more space. And from that, you can do your hub and spoke. So that is being, uh, certainly seems to be a bit more demand for that. We're also seeing from some clients sort of demand for these multi-generational -gener requests. Sure. Um, so, and I think that really is coming from the, from the USA in particular. And, um, so that's that's coming through as well, and you know people want to stay, get a bit more active. That seems to be uh, maybe that's what people have been doing. Certainly, the first lockdown, I was a lot more active than I was the second lockdown. Right. But uh, you know that's coming through as well with with uh, with demand. So um, it, it is a mixture. I think a lot of people are just going with what they know sold before COVID, and then other people are sort of listening to to what, where the demand is. And, a key, key one for us uh, it was multi-generational uh, sure. was coming through, which, which is a great idea. Um, you know, can't beat family. Well, you know, I, absolutely. I did. That sort of happened way back in 9-11, I think. Multi-generational travel really got a boost then. But uh, I love the idea of more active uh, vacations and uh, that's an outdoors. Uh, that's clearly what something here is, is, is really people are focusing on. And in, in your case, you mentioned briefly the whole idea of maybe staying outside of the city, staying in smaller properties, uh, 
inns and you know, I, I've per personally traveled in Scotland and England quite a lot and always enjoyed that aspect of travel uh, in small yes. nations that maybe, you know, uh, not, 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 nothing to say bad about the big chains, but uh, uh, it's sometimes a lot, lot, uh, a lot more interesting to stay in some local places like that, right? Absolutely. You know, one of these things is sort of meet the locals and, and people ask us, oh, we want to meet the locals. And I, I kind of not struggle with it, but, you know, you have to have a conversation. Well, what does that actually mean? Because it's maybe it slow the pace down of your, your tour. So you are actually enabling yourself to have time to sort of meet with, um, you know, people in, in the pubs, uh, people in the restaurants, people in, in the shops. I mean, we can organize, um, you know, events where you can, shoot dog trials or whatever. But it can become a bit stilted then when it's not sort of a natural uh, encounter. So uh, one of the things about the Scots and, and, and the Irish is, well, we're not shy of a conversation. <laughs> and whether it's good news or bad news, we don't mind sharing it. So, um, you know, that's, that's uh, a great way of, uh, of doing that. So maybe just slowing, slowing the, the tours down a little bit and, uh, as you say, staying out of the, out of the big chains. Now that's that's a, a, a certainly a great way to to visit uh, uh, Scotland, England, and Ireland. Now, uh, how can travel advisors here in the U.S. sort of best work with Jack Travel? Uh, should they reach out directly to you? Uh, and at, at some point, I gather you hope to start sales visits back here in the U.S. I assume. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't I can't wait to get over to the to the U.S. Um, although I always seem to travel when it's the winter, um, <laughs> but. We have got Matthew Lapisto, who is our head of sales, based in New Jersey. Okay. So, uh, I mean, he's very knowledgeable about UK uh, and Ireland. And, um, yeah, but right now, he's he's based over in, in New Jersey, and uh, he he. So there is a number that you can connect directly with him. Uh, we've also got a website which we can we can share, and that will have product ideas and. You know, enable you to, to register, and if you've got something specific that you want to talk to one of the you know our travel advisors about, we can we can do that. Um, I mean, I keep going on about it, but the real thing is it's communication. Uh, I'm a big fan of actually just picking up the phone, or as we do now through Teams or Zoom, discussing what your needs are with your client. How could we help you? What's really to get to grips with? Um, what's required because there really isn't much that we can't offer. As I say, we don't do flights, um, but everything else on the ground we can, we can do, certainly work towards making sure we can do it. Um, so let's, let's reach out. I always say it's a consultative approach, team effort. Let's work in partnership. Uh, either do that by reaching out to Matthew or via our website. Let's arrange a call and see how we can work together. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell our travel advisor viewers out here in the U.S. about Jack Travel? Not really. I mean, I would just sort of, I think we covered most of it. I would just go back to the point of your, we can't wait to welcome you back into the U.K. and Ireland. We are here to, to work together where it's been a difficult time, but I generally feel we're through the worst. And let's crack on and, you know, get busy together we're looking forward to working with you absolutely well Andy I want to thank you for uh, spending some time with us today I wish I was spending time where you are right now it looks absolutely beautiful if uh, yeah nothing nothing else sells uh, Scotland uh, your location does right now because it is a glorious day in Scotland in the afternoon um, and and I have been there right where you are and it is really a marvelous place uh, Edinburgh is one of my favorite cities uh, and, of course, you sell so many other wonderful destinations in Scotland, uh, England, and uh, Ireland. So we do hope to be getting back to you soon. Uh, and uh, I know our travel advisor viewers are really looking forward to getting their clients. I mean, Europe, believe it or not, and I'm sure you've heard it, is really high in demand. We're waiting to, to you know, the floodgates are going to open soon. And uh, we're oh, all... Come on over. Come there on you over. You're, you're very welcome. I look forward to having a pint with you at some point, James. Absolutely. That sounds sounds like a, that sounds like a, a deal. We'll 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 meet the locals in a pub. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> Good man.
Good night. Anyway, uh, All right. Andy, again, thank you very much. And uh, I'm uh, James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>